I'm Grace Chu, and you're watching The Little Green Dot, a new show produced by seven students from Nyan Technological University, Singapore, for the United Nations Environmental Programme Youth Climate Report. Singapore, one of the four Asian tigers, an economic miracle 47 years in the making. But much has been sacrificed in the pursuit of economic excellence. More recently, World Wildlife Fund named Singapore as the country with the largest carbon footprint per capita in the Asia-Pacific region. In response to this, the National Environment Agency said the city-state has no choice but to rely on fossil fuels because its small size limits it from switching to alternative sources. But are there other ways to reduce our carbon footprint? The Little Green Dot finds out what's being done to help save the environment in the area of transport. Hybrid, natural gas or electric, what makes these cars green and what is the way to go? I went out in search for the answer and to find out why the government should do more to encourage the use of green taxis. With fuel prices steadily headed for the stratosphere, even the most hard-nosed taxi companies recognise that fossil fuels are not the way of the future. One of Singapore's newer taxi operators, Smart Taxis, has a fleet that runs on both compressed natural gas and petrol. The company says CNG is cheap and fairly abundant. It emits 90% less carbon monoxide into the ozone layer. Despite its prospects, CNG still has its fair share of problems. A tax of 16 cents per kilogram of CNG kicked in early this year, sending taxi drivers into a tailspin. Comparing one litre of CNG with one litre of petrol, drivers now have to pay $1.36 per litre of CNG compared to $1.43 per litre of petrol. To make matters worse, taxi driver David Chong tells us how CNG fueling stations are few and far between. In year 2007, only Jurong Island, there's a only gas station in Singapore. Then year 2008, Mainland got two, and now maximum to four CNG stations in Singapore. For other taxi drivers, CNG cars not only spell inconvenience, but also less engine power. At this moment, uh, I, I prefer petrol. Petrol first thing, more powerful. Second thing, do any station you can park. But this one, you have to all the way come here. Mr. Lan says that the average waiting time for refueling can be about 15 minutes. Coupled with the travelling time to CNG stations, the time taken is enough to earn $8 to $12. To help address the various problems that CNG taxis in Singapore are facing, Nanyang Technological University of Singapore and Technical University of Munich in Germany have partnered to design and build the world's first electric taxi. Here at the Research Techno Plaza, over 90 scientists and engineers are involved in this five-year-long project. Started in April 2011, this project is part of Toon Create. Engineer Halim Witono tells us why they decided to focus on taxis. The number of taxis in Singapore is only contributed to about 3% of the total vehicles in Singapore. However, the total mileage it consumed, the total fuel consumption can take out up to 14% of every single vehicle in Singapore. We also consider like different type of vehicles, uh, a small uh, family car or a bigger uh, electric bus, and we realized that electric taxi has the most, can contribute to the most impact in terms of energy saving and well-to-wheel energy consumption. Apart from conserving energy, the taxi has a new design with added cabin space and a quieter engine, says Tum Create Corporate CEO Dr. Ulrich Stimming. In the cities today, is that there's so much noise actually from, from car traffic or, or trucks also. What you will have is actually much cleaner cities. But will the electric taxi charge on in Singapore? Dr. Stimming says it will, provided the people and government support it. The final product will be a taxi built and tested by the Tomb Create team, and a demonstrator vehicle will be released in 2014. This is Grace Chu in Singapore reporting for the Youth Climate Report.